story points. In my experience, this seems to be the most confusing concept for the people who are learning Agile and they are coming from project management background and this remains the confusing topic for many people who have been practicing Agile for a while. The reason which I feel is that many of the organizations are using story point for the different purpose for not for the purpose for which it was created. So let's understand what is the story point and try to understand what kind of a problem this mechanism of estimation solves and how can we make use of this way of doing estimation. So as we understand this is the all about product backlog. So you can say that yeah I have a product backlog and I want to have some amount of understanding to say that at least some portion of this work can be done in how much time. So I want to forecast that okay probably this much how many months or, or iterations it will take to get this thing done. And in order to do that particular forecasting the first and the, the primary thing I need is some quantum of sizing, some way of sizing the items which are there in the product backlog. So the sizing can help me in identifying how much work is there and what probably it will take to get it done, maybe in the form of money as well as in the form of time. But here is the problem. We exactly don't know how and when this work will get implemented. In the traditional world, we used to finalize the scope and then we used to create detailed breakdown structure, identify set of activities and then start estimating there. In the agile world, we don't want to spend that much time on a, this particular item because we don't know it may get dropped after some time. So we want to have a sizing but at the same time we want to do something which doesn't involve too much of time uh, involvement, too much of analysis of that work because work is going to emerge over a period of time. So we don't want to divide the work into small, small items, work breakdown structure, we don't want to estimate activities, we don't want to sequence them but we want to have some kind of quantification of work which is here. So story point estimation helps us in achieving that objective. So again the exact forecast of the end date is not happening here, there will be some amount of error but the, it helps us in doing some amount of quantification and sizing of the work. So what are we trying to do here? We are saying okay you have these product backlog items based on what is simple, what is complex, what is super complex, can you categorize them into various segments, buckets so that we can know what is small and what is large. Yeah, that's the whole idea. So we can say that okay let's figure it out. Uh, and, and in order to have that sizing, we come up with a series. We can say, okay, we may use a series which could be a Fibonacci series or a little bit modified way of doing Fibonacci series and you may say and 20 and maybe more numbers and where you can identify that, okay, let's discuss these items and try to put them into different, different bucket. The thing which is the easiest to do may become one and if something is more complex than the one, one, we may give it two. And relatively the three may take three times the one or it's more complex than, than one. Now you may say okay how do you know this will take more time, this will take less time, which story should be given three, which story should be given five. So it is done as a group estimation activity where people are expected to share, people are sharing their opinion about it and when they are thinking about it they might be thinking various parameters. So you can say the story point might be a function of the amount of work volume yeah, uh, uh, which is there in the work, maybe the type of risk and uncertainties you see in that particular work, you want to have some contingencies there, the complexity, the, the thing which requires more complex logic and understanding that may also be factored in when you are judging a particular number and you may also see a few items like dependencies or the something else. Yeah. Whatever is relevant from the team, they are thinking about these items and they are thinking okay which one should be considered simple and which one should be considered more complex over the, the simple. Now when I am saying that these things can be considered, you might say okay what we should not be considering when we are doing story point. We should not be considering the sequence of work which means like there might be multiple stories and when I am estimating C, can I assume that C will be get done after D? I should not be assuming it because these priorities may change. These priorities may get refined at any point in time. I can't but technically you can say if I am doing D first or, or uh, before C, I can reuse that code and it may take half the time. 
and if I am doing D later, then it may result into double the time. Now, what should I put? You should put based on just absolutely thinking about C. Without thinking, it will get done before D or after D. You can say, if I just have to do the D, that's that how much time and effort it will take, how much complexity it will involve, and based on that, we are forecasting that particular time. So, we are not estimating the effort here. That's the important point. Because effort will be a factor of sequence. Effort will be a factor of who is doing what. But we are estimating the, the volume, the uncertainty, the complexity, the other, other factors which are pretty much visible, the external dependency if there are uh, involved. And based on that, we are coming up with, okay, this seems to be the higher in those factors over the other. And it's a judgment. Yeah, your judgment might go wrong at some point in time. You may want to correct it. That's the, the another important point. As we discussed few times before as well, this is an ongoing activity. So it's not like you have a one product backlog and you do a story point estimation once and that's frozen and baseline. Nothing like that. Over a period of time, maybe every month or every 15 days or every week, you end up looking at them again. You may have a new items identified, the old items get splitted. And based on that, you may want to revisit the whole product backlog. Because many of these items are getting created and revisited, you need to look into the whole things again. There is a possibility some of the items which are pretty much not changing, they are not yet invested on, they may remain as it is as before, but there will be a good number of items which may get revisited because they got divided into smaller items. Because we may not work on this E item directly, we may divide the E item into E1, E2, E3 and put into a next product backlog, uh, next version of the product backlog. And when it is getting divided into three, we may need to revisit their story points. Yeah. Now somebody will say, okay, the E was 13 before. If I divide into E1, E2, E3, will the total will match to 13? Not necessary. Not necessary because now you are applying your latest judgment. Whenever we are doing estimation, we are applying our latest understanding of volume, uncertainty, complexity, and if there is any other factor relevant, all the time applying the latest understanding, which may result into some deviation in our initial estimate over the next estimate. And why this deviation is there? It's an input for us to do a better forecasting, because the whole idea is we can't close our eyes from something which we are discovering on a regular basis. Now, let's talk about this particular series. Yeah. That, okay, why do we have such kind of series and what is the utility of it? Can we have something else? So the idea of story point is we want to have some non-linear series. It is not necessarily just linked to a story point way of doing. It's, a, it's a generally the way we do estimation. If something is very clear cut, we can estimate them into a very short gaps, you know, one, two or three. But if something is weak, something is big, we may want to estimate it in a higher number. So say if you want to plan a trip, for, for a small, like short duration, you may estimate the duration in a minutes. But if you are planning a trip for, for a day or something, then you automatically start talking about the day or hours. Why? Because the duration is becoming higher. You don't want to estimate that long duration trip in minutes, but you may want to estimate the duration of a short duration trip in a minute. That's how we can say these are the short duration trips, these are the long duration trips, because long duration trips has a more error. So we want to increase the gap. So if something is more than 8, we want to put it 13 rather than just putting 9, 10, 11, 12, something like that because there is a possibility we may be making error in our judgment and the 13 as a number helps us in quantifying the amount of work which is uh, involved in the overall product backlog. So if I summarize, story points are absolute number. They are not representing day, hours or anything. They represent the sizing of the product backlog items which are lying into a product backlog. We use a modified Fibonacci series which gives us non-linearity in the system. The, the, the judgment is made by the team and when they are making the judgment about categorizing something 1 or something 5, they are considering various factors like volume of work, complexity, risk involved and, and this understanding and judgment may evolve over a period of time and we should not be shy of, of modifying our estimates based on the new learning because the product backlog is expected to emerge as we go in our project progressively.